because you know of, I had a deeper relationship, although I hadn't played with the with the old boys for so long, and we have even, hadn't even been on talking terms for so long. Still, what we established in the 80s and what we achieved together in the 80s was something which one just cannot th throw away or one can't look on the other side, you know, mm -hmm. look away. It uh, had to take the opportunity, we're still alive and, and uh, luckily the whole spirit was reignited and, um, and now it's really up in flames, you know. <laughs> Well, that whole time period, I mean, those relationships that you had with those guys were really sort of forged in fire because you guys made some of the iconic metal albums of that genre all together in that era with Metal Rendezvous, Hardware, One Vice at a Time, and Headhunter. That's sort of where you guys all made your bones as a band. So now, having grown and you're older and wiser, was it... Uh, was it different coming back together in the studio now to make the new album? Oh, well, um, in the meantime, I personally have done a few more albums. <laughs> so I've got, I've got quite a lot of, uh, studio experience. It's, it's, it's for me like, comes like second nature to go in and, and, you know, I have my rituals, which I need to, to keep and, and then everything usually goes fine. When Fernando and I decided we entrusted the production job with Chris Von Rohr, who in the meantime had um, established more experience, uh, established him, himself as a producer in Switzerland, um, we, we decided, you know, well, let him take care of the new baby and we'll try and come up with as many good ideas as possible. So uh, when the, the whole thing was was like very homogenic, you know, very um, biological, if you like, very natural, and um, you know the way we we came together with eager spirits and and the chemistry flowed, and we wrote the songs. And we, when we went into the studio, obviously everyone's going in individually. You know, we didn't record it live in the studio. Um, the guitars were done in Solothurn with uh, Jörg Nagali, who is actually ex-bass player of Crocus and um, is also an experienced studio man and engineer. And uh, they focused on guitars and they used old Marshalls and old Gretches and Gibson Les Pauls and Fender jazz bass and really tried to recapture the crocus sound of the 80s and uh, with me i did my vocals in germany chris and i took the train and went to germany and had a good time there with dennis ward as engineer dennis had produced the hellraiser album prior to hoodoo so there was an established relationship and kind of working routine with dennis anyway and chris was uh very, very instrumental in, in keeping the, you know, good vibe going and, and the flow. You know, I can only talk positive about it. And uh, I even used the Shore SM58, which I held in my hand uh, singing. I love doing that rather than the stiff, big studio microphone where uh, you you can't bend. You have to really watch the the space between your face and the microphone right. and really there's no way you can bend your knees or anything you have to stay there right in front of it so that's why I prefer holding the mic and with a SM58 on my voice it's it's a great match you know get the grittiness that really dirty sound and um, yeah the whole thing went really really well. The the other guys, the guitar players, had a great time in solo turn and kept the schedule going in a practical manner. And Chris and I kept going up and down to Stuttgart, you know, recording with uh, Dennis Ward in the House of Music. And it turned out really well, the whole thing, as you can hear. Oh, yes, absolutely. Excellent, excellent record, as I've already said probably 20 times already, but 
on the record, you, you guys have had uh, a real knack for taking some classic rock songs and sort of crocusizing them. And, yeah. and you've done yeah, it yeah. again. You've done it again on the new album. You you covered uh, Born to Be Wild. Uh, tell me why you've sort of chosen some of the cover songs you have over the years, and, and including Born to Be Wild and, and how that all came about. Well, it all started out because uh, we uh, we heard that uh, in order to get um, increased airplay in Canada, you have to have Canadian content, you know, which means a song which was written by Canadian uh, composers somewhere in there. So that's where we picked uh, American Woman <laughs> and really turned it head over heels and crocusized the hell out of it and and uh, stuck it on, on our record. And um, it really turned out the way the way we uh, prophesized. You know, they played the hell out of it in Canada, and we toured there. Every time we toured the States, we used to pass through Canada um, from east to west or west to east um, every time on every tour, sometimes twice round, you know. So it really helped. So then we kept up this tradition, and... Uh, we took songs from Bachmann, Randy Bachmann was always in there, and then we, then it changed later on. We we took uh, Ballroom Blitz by Sweet. Um, that that was uh, we we kind of left that uh, um, formula because I guess we didn't need it that any any longer. We were getting more airplay anyway, and um, yeah, and and, and now. The reason why we, uh, ah, yeah, later on we did Schools Out by Alice Cooper uh, on Change of Address, and this turned out to be the only uh, top 40 uh, hit that we ever had. You know, we had never had a single in the top 40. We, we always did good with the whole album in the top 100 of uh, the USA Billboard. Uh, but never the the top forty. So yeah, with with a change of address, uh, Alice Cooper schools out. And and lately <laughs> we went for uh, Born to Be Wild because we we realized you know it's a song it's a biker song today it's it's an anthem for for bikers if you like. And, uh, you know, bikers are a big thing today. And, you, and it, it's not just old hippies or old rockers driving them. It's, it's also, you know, lawyers who want to have a good time when, <laughs> or, or accountants who want to have a, a cool time feeling free, uh, after the long office hours they spend, you know, and here's us. On the other hand, we, we chose the song because we grew up with Woodstock, you know, and we were in in the old hippie days, and, and, and then came the hard rock, and, uh, you know, Steppenwolf, the band, and even the book is, you know, the whole thing, it's, it's uh, a part of our culture, it's a part of our um, growing up, it's a part of the roots of the musicians in Crocus, and we said, hell, let's just do one for us. <laughs> we don't care what we're going to achieve with this one. We, you know, if it doesn't get airplay, who cares? There's, it's been covered a million times, so if everyone else has done it, why the hell can't we too, you know? <laughs> Let's have let's have a good time and just do this one. And we really did, and we added more pep to it, and um, even changed the melody slightly around and gave it a, a different kind of finale. And ends with a bang. And now actually we're closing our uh, whole show. We closed the whole show with that one, the the headline show with uh, Born to be Wild and, and it's good because it's it's uh, exciting 
and I guess it even sounds better live. <laughs> 